In this video, I'll share five practical time management techniques specifically tailored for business owners. These techniques will help business owners prioritize their tasks, stay organized, and make the most of their time. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I help business owners reduce their workload by at least 10 hours each week without needing to try harder and work harder, and be more disciplined. One of the main challenges that business owners face is that they don't have dedicated blocks of time in their calendar of an hour, two hours, three hours, where they can just work uninterrupted on big projects or important tasks or things that require brain power, not just knocking things off a to-do list and returning email and answering messages in Slack, but really, really concentrated, higher level thinking. And I'm gonna share with you five reasons why this happens and what you can do about it. A nice technique to help you regain that thinking time that you so desperately need in order to continue to move your business forward. One of the reasons that business owners have a hard time creating and keeping a block of time in their calendar is they just have too much to do, which means that they're having a delegating challenge. Maybe it's because they feel like they're the business owner, therefore they need to do all the tasks. Maybe it's because they haven't figured out how to remove themselves from doing all the tasks they want to, but they don't know how. But the bottom line is they have too much on their plate. And in order to create those open blocks of time to be able to think, they need to move some of the stuff off their plate. And one way to do that is to be able to delegate. So here's your tip. It's really hard to know what to delegate if you're not crystal clear on what it is that you're doing every day. And I used to tell my clients, track your time, track your tasks, jot them down or put them, you know, put them in an online program or do all these things. Bottom line is it's cumbersome. My clients hated it. The data was great, but trying to get the data out of that and, and getting it into a place where you could use the data, that was difficult. So one of the ways that you can kind of shortcut that, it's not gonna give you the, as great of data as if you actually were clocking what you were doing every 15 minutes, but it's to go ahead and look at your sent emails every, you know, at the end of the day, go back through and look at your sent emails. That'll give you an idea of some of the things you've been doing. Also, in Asana or whatever project management system you're looking at, look at the archive part of the inbox. So um, after you respond to things or click thumbs up on things, you can check what those are. Those will give you an idea of your tasks. And then also in the completed portion of your task manager or project management system, task management system, look at what were the things that you accomplished there. That gives you somewhat of an idea of what you're doing each day. You can also, you know, look in Slack, look at your text messages, look at all those communication channels that you're utilizing. That'll give you an idea of where you're spending your time. And then also look at your calendar. What are the activities or projects or meetings that are sitting there in your calendar? Again, the best way to delegate is to have a clear view of what it is you're doing and the best way to figure out what you're doing is to actually track it. And if tracking it feels way too overwhelming, too big of a lift, too cumbersome, at the end of the day, just go back through and recreate what were some of the things you did and use your sent email, completed items on your to-do list or in your task management system, etc. One of the toughest things about delegating is actually understanding what in the world can you delegate. And the best way to do that is to figure out what is on your plate. What is it that you're doing day in and day out? Often I will ask clients, track your tasks and your time for a week. And I will often hear, this is too hard. It's too cumbersome. It's too big of a lift. There's so much stuff, all of the things. The more accurately you track, the better data you have to make decisions. However, if the thought of tracking your time is super overwhelming, here's a kind of a shortcut to that. And it's what I did yesterday with my virtual assistant. We jumped on Zoom together and together we went through my sent email folder and that identified some of the things that I was doing throughout the day. We also looked at my completed tasks in Asana. We use Asana as our project management system. That identified what I was doing <laughs> the last couple of days. Also, we looked at the archive portion of the inbox in Asana. 
that showed, you know, where I gave input, where, you know, I had my eyes on things. And then finally we looked at what's in my current inbox. What are the things that are assigned to me coming up? That gave me somewhat of a comprehensive view, if that's even a thing. That gave me somewhat of a view of the things that are on my plate. We then went and looked at the calendar. What appointments do I have? What meetings am I going to? Where have I blocked time to work on projects? Which also added another piece to the puzzle. Is it as good as actually tracking my time over the last couple of weeks? Absolutely not. It did give us some groundwork and we were able to move, I wanna say maybe 15 things off my plate that had somehow snuck in that weren't really my thing. So if you're trying to create that open block of space in your calendar and you feel like you have too much to do all the time, start to delegate. And the first thing you can do to start to delegate is figure out accurately what's actually on your plate. The second reason that people struggle to create that open block of time on their calendar and to get things done, important things done, to work through big projects is that their email and file management is kind of a mess. You know, that feeling that the, it's a never ending inbox and that you're actually wasting time while you're processing your email. Yet when you don't process your email, things fall to the cracks and you're putting out fires and how do you balance all of that? So here's a strategy for you. When you get into the inbox, decide, are you skimming it for information, for fires, for something important, or are you actually processing the inbox, getting through all the stuff in there? Whatever it is, and throughout the day is probably a combination of both, devote the time to that in your calendar. Actually devote time to get in there and skim through if you're waiting for an important email, or you know that there are time sensitive things that hit your inbox at certain um, periods throughout the day and you wanna be on top of those. It's fine to skim through the inbox and cherry pick things out. Just block it into your calendar. And then you also need time, however, to process email, to get through everything. Many times clients will feel that that's the same activity. Like they're like, I'm in my inbox, but I can only get through the first 15. I can never get through everything. Okay, well, that's going to happen unless you have more time devoted to actually processing your inbox. Or they'll say, I just go through my inbox all the time. I never seem to get anywhere. Well, that's probably because you're skimming for certain things and cherry picking out certain things that you need, but not actually taking the time to process. So you wanna make sure that you can do both on a regular basis. Another reason that clients will struggle to keep a block of time open on their calendar to work on things that they actually need to think about and strategize over is that they are putting out fires all day long. And how many times have you felt this way? It's noon and all I've done is answered my email or I had my plan and it had my three high value activities and I'm gonna get in my office and the first thing I'm gonna do is work on this big project and instead I had to put out fires all day long. It happens, it's a reality. And usually what happens is when you don't get to those high value activities, first thing in the morning, and then the rest of the day happens and you're reacting to the fires and everything that's going on around you, you end up coming back into the office in the evening or on the weekend to get the important work done. Instead, here's a strategy that'll help you stay on track and not get sidetracked by fires and it's to identify what's an actual emergency. So many times we will treat things as if they're an emergency, when all reality, they're just unexpected. The phone call from a client wasn't an emergency. We just wasn't, we weren't expecting it. And so therefore we dropped what we were doing to handle that thing. The coworker who comes in and asks for a question or the team member who needs help with something, those are unexpected. They're usually not fires. When you can identify, here's what an actual fire is, then you know exactly what you drop everything for. Everything else just gets rescheduled at a later time. Another reason that clients have a difficult time having that block of time in their calendar where they can really focus on the important things uninterrupted is a challenge with scheduling and calendaring and planning and routines. And what happens is they feel like they're rushing from one appointment to the next and they feel like they can barely keep up and that they're pretty much winging it and they're going to let someone down and all this stuff is happening at all the same time. And so it is absolutely impossible to schedule a block of time in their calendar because they're just constantly feeling like they're behind. So if this is you, 
Here is one strategy that you can do. One is plan. 60% of the clients who come to me don't consistently plan, whether it's quarterly planning or weekly planning or daily planning, plan. Plan a block of time to work on the big picture things and plan for all those meetings and appointments that you have. If When you take a half hour at the end of the week to look to the week ahead and pull together all the material that you need, make sure that you have, you know, if you have a meeting, do you have the minutes from the meeting before and the agenda? And are you fully prepared? If you're, you know, meeting with a client, do you have the proposal with you? Do you have all their pieces together? Have you looked to make sure that you've answered all their correspondence ahead of time? When you do those things a few days before, you don't feel like you're rushing, 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 and you're also not left carving out bits and pieces of that um, block of planning time to get things last minute so you're prepared for what you're doing um, in an hour. The fifth strategy for today is around task tracking. Many times business owners will feel that they just don't have a clear understanding of everything that's on their plate. They're using the inbox as the your to-do list. You're finding post-it notes stuck to the bottom of things, your shoes, papers, folders on your desk. You see a text message from two weeks ago that you read and you thought you responded to in your head, but you didn't actually do it on the text. And that can be frustrating and take a lot of time. And then that makes you feel like you have too much to do with not enough time, which means you don't have time to actually devote to those big projects. So instead, here's a strategy for that. Come up with one place to store all the to-dos. It's not your head. It's not the inbox of your email. So it's one place to store all the to-dos and process all the other stuff into that one location at the end of the day. I have a client who does a great job of getting everything out of his email and text messages and phone calls and all the things he gets them all in one spot his to-do list and then he can easily organize it and decide what needs to get done what can he delegate all of that where the system falls down is when he's walking around talking to his team and a team member will say we need to reorder these parts or i'm going to need help on this next week can you assign me some additional resources or you know can we have a meeting tomorrow to talk about the budget or whatever those cases may be and he has every intention of following up on all of those items and in the moment he says yes absolutely we can do all those things and then he gets back to his office and he forgets it's not that he means to drop the ball it's just that he doesn't have a good system for that use whatever system works best for you. He now is using this little tiny old school notepad <laughs> that he sticks in his pocket. It could be that you could send yourself an email using your phone. Um, you could write it on your hand. Like it doesn't matter. Just do something so that you're capturing all the pieces that you need to capture. To recap, the top challenge that I see many of my clients face is that they don't have time to actually sit down and devote to bigger picture thinking, working through projects, anything that takes longer than 15 or 20 minutes to accomplish. And the five reasons that this can happen, because it all comes from that feeling of you have too much to do. There's no way you can actually schedule two hours to work on a project and get it done unless you're doing it in the evenings or on the weekends when no one's around. And the five reasons that we see that happening are not delegating or not delegating well, not having a really strong email processing system, allowing fires to overtake your day, rushing from one appointment to another, to another, to another, and not planning out what you need so that you're prepared and successful. And finally, not having one solid container to put all the tasks in and finding some at various times in other places. When you can solve those five challenges, you can easily create the time that you need and keep it and use it each and every week so that you can work on bigger projects for your business to move your business forward. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in what you just watched, go ahead and click the thumbs up and subscribe. In a moment, more videos will be popping up on your screen. Go ahead and watch those too.